Remember when we used to talk about the paperless office? E-commerce. Finding a contract on paper. And even giving out an agent's pager number. We're in a mobile world. We're in a mobile world and, and your, your business, business needs, needs to, to be too. too. It's a digital world. Workflow is changing. And so too are our experiences. There are over 350 prop tech players right now competing for the space. How do you keep up with it all? And what's next? Welcome to Founders. A new podcast with Josh Vegan On the future of workflow in real estate. Marketing is one of the most important conversations for any real estate agency, and there's no doubt that literally the marketing in the right way can be absolute fuel to the fire. It's like literally putting kerosene on a particular environment and just seeing it take off. But ultimately, if we have poor marketing, all we do is we actually burn significant amounts of cash flow. It's kind of amazing because every single time that the market's flying, everyone always says that it's the marketing that's working. And every single time that the market stops, people actually blame the marketing as the reasons why it's not working. Great marketing is really thinking about how you tap into consumers' minds. And today we're going to go on that journey and what it takes to be phenomenal in building great marketing and great branding inside of the residential real estate space. We're going to bring in an expert who's going to talk to us about the difference between what it actually is that we do around brand marketing, agency marketing, uh, agent marketing, and property marketing, and the conversation around how we really separate and differentiate in those digital spaces. Steve Osborne, great to have you on our Founders Podcast today. Talk to us a little bit about what is a brand in the market. A brand is really just how consumers perceive the company and what the company actually does. And and there's so many ways that a brand can differentiate itself beyond just its colour. So if you look inside of residential real estate, people often go, well, you know, yellow's my colour or green's my colour. And and they don't go much further than that. But there's so many other ways that they can take their, their, their brand to differentiate itself. So, for example, Bunnings, you know, they've got their slogan, lowest prices, adjust the beginning. Or Peter Alexander, they've got their brand scent where you, you your nose knows the, that you're at, at their store before you even see it because they've got those vanilla cookie scents that are inside of all the stores no matter where you go in the world. Or you look at, say, Netflix mm. where they've got that dun-dun mm-hmm. with their sound mark, right? And that, that tells you it's time to relax, to sit down, and a movie's about to start. You know, Toyota, they've got that like jump with their <laughs> movement mark. And, and that's a really good one because if you ever look at the hashtag Toyota, there's so many people that buy a car and actually take, do that jump in front of that car. And that becomes like a unique asset that, that just Toyota has and, and their, their competitors don't. There's so many ways that, that, um, that brands outside of real estate are really differentiating themselves from competitors. You know, even look at some of the events like the Australian Open by Kia or, <laughs> um, the Ford. I still thought it was Ford. Ford? Yeah. Ford was like literally 1980s. <laughs> and it's interesting, like, you know, so you can get that brand association. So it's phenomenal because you're, you're absolutely spot on that people actually understand it. But it's this whole idea about like brands create experiences or expectations, mm. right? And, and that you would have an expectation that Maccas is going to have great fries mm. and that ultimately the bathrooms there are going to be clean. And, and ultimately, sometimes those brand standards are dropped, right? And, and this is an interesting conversation. What do you actually stand for? So today, we're going to talk a little bit about positioning, Steve, about where brands actually position in marketplace. And if I said to you, Louis Vuitton, I would say high price, high value. If I said reject shop, I'd say low price, okay value. And if I said like David Jones, probably mid price, mid value. Mm. Talk to us about how real estate brands have got to start to think about their competitive landscape and then how they actually zoom specifically in on that. Yeah, like there's really three, like you were just saying, and there's three main spaces that residential agencies can play in. There's that luxury end of the property, there's that mid-range of, of the market, and there's that lower end properties, often like investment properties or just the, the properties that aren't as expensive. And, and to really be seen in that higher end of the market, a lot of that really comes down to um, having brand discipline, so having really strong messaging. Mm-hmm. And you see that over in um, Victoria where you've got Jealous Craig, or you mm-hmm. see that um, in Sydney with McGrath. Mm-hmm. Um you know, a lot of it comes back to how you actually use your assets. Like what type of photos are you taking of your properties? Mm. When you are promoting the properties that you're selling, are you promoting all of them? Are you promoting the ones that actually align with the brand and the perception that you want to be perceived as out in the, in, out in the market? So it's an interesting conversation though. Like, like how important is it to actually set where you want to be positioned as a brand before you start to think about your execution and where that actually turns up? So like I'm going to say, do you want to be a really expensive one or do you want to be a, a really cheap one? And I think a little bit about this, there can only be one real estate agency in every market that's actually going to be the cheapest. Mm. So from that perspective, what that means is that if you're not planning on being the cheapest, then how are you planning on winning? Now, if there's 30 brands inside a particular marketplace at any one point in time, you actually have to compete with those 30 other brands. Mm. And so um, the only way to compete is going to be on design. 
and design is about how you package, market, and develop your experiences. So the thing that I say, Steve, about this, and and you'll tell us on the journey, but if I walk into a cafe or a restaurant and say, oh, sir, can I take your jacket? And you go, yeah, okay, great. That's a hundred bucks a pop. If I go into a restaurant and say, oh, can I get some water? I say, yeah, mate, taps over in the corner. That's probably $20 a head. Mm. And so what you got to start thinking about is that, like the brand experience is built in all of those small little moments that add up to the big moment of the overall experience, which is from scent to design to look to feel about how you actually bring all those things together. Now, this is a really important thing about how many times do you think that agencies don't really understand that where if you think about customer experience, Mm. customer experience is brand and brand is actually pricing power. So Louis Vuitton has the ability to charge you $1,400 for a set of shoes, but yet you can also go down to Speed Shoes or Payless and buy some for $29. Now, they're both fundamentally shoes. They're both some school shoes, but what makes them better? And that's the interesting conversation to get right about like where brand positioning plays. What are your thoughts about how agencies can determine which markets they want to play in and how they plan to compete with their competitors when they're getting that brand architecture designed? Yeah, agencies can absolutely do that. And that really comes down to their, their brand strategy. And, and um, you know, and a brand strategy is really just um, a plan that really defines like the company and where the company is going. It looks at things like its mission, its vision, mm. you know, its purpose. Like, why does this company actually need to exist? You know, um, it then guides a lot of brand related decisions. Um, and they, these then become marketing tasks and these marketing tasks then become a marketing calendar. And I think a lot of residential agencies really start with, you know, we need a marketing calendar. Mm-hmm. And then they go from there and create a whole bunch of content on social and a whole bunch of things to put in people's letterboxes. But they've actually skipped about 10 steps before that mm-hmm. to actually identify like, who's the brand? Who's our audience? Mm-hmm. What are some of the themes, some of the the values that the people inside of this marketplace actually have? And then how can our brand talk to that? And because they're skipping these steps, it then leaves the person who's doing that marketing no chance mm-hmm. of actually of actually connecting with customers. And and you can just tell when you look at these real estate agencies that they really don't know who they are. If you scroll down their Instagram Instagram page, you can see that every six months or so, like the the look and the feel and the style just completely changes. Mm. And you scroll down another six months and it's done it again. And you can see they've either had a change internally or they changed agencies or mm. or that they're they're just doing something different because for the sake of being different or they're copying their competitors or they're copying, you know, White Fox over in Melbourne or whoever it is that they're, they're copying. And, and you can just see they just don't know who they are. And by not having those strong foundations, it just makes it so much harder for them to be able to position, you know, who, who, who they are in the marketplace, you know, who are the customers that they're serving, you know, what price point are they in? And that's an interesting part around, you know, like you're getting really clear. Like we had a positioning conversation when we built Josh Vegan, right? And when we had a look at that, we said, okay, great. Mm. How do we create a timeless brand? Yeah. So, and, and secondary part, like literally where do we want to position? So, you know, um, there was the sex and the sizzle or there's the conversation around down here about boring but very important and, and stayed and mm. statistical and numbers and evidence. And, you know, believe it or not, we try to get somewhere in the middle yeah. bet- between those things. So, like there's a bit of sex and sizzle, but at the end of the day, it's a very important conversation around what it is that we do. So, when you look at it, we said, okay, great, black and white will be our colour scheme. But most importantly, we're going to go with this whole conversation that we're going to allow the assets that we build in the way that we shoot our videos and the style of, of, of how we actually get our photos taken, that those can be the things that we can play with, with the electric blue lights or the mm. electric red lights and do those things. But yet when you see our brand, hopefully it is like the classic of a Chanel of, it, of it's a very simple black and white delivery. Now, this is a really important mechanism because a lot of people get carried away with it, but then they don't back up the customer experience of what the customer goes to mm. receive. And so when you look at really good retailers, they think about the before, during and after. So before you actually approach the store, what is the, what is the senses, the feelings and the emotions during the course of the actual transaction? What actually happens? Um, what does the receipt look like? Does that get emailed to you? Is it in a physical form? Does it go inside of a folio? You know, where is it printed? Is there a big printer on the, on the, on the desk? Is there not? Is it under the desk? Like at the Apple stores, like, you know, all of these things that were done over time. And then literally the, the post experience when you get, um, when you actually get home, What's the unwrapping experience? Mm. And so like, and that's that whole conversation. Why did they give me a bag and then put that little sticker in the middle of the bag over at the top? Uh, Cause I can't open the bag and put anything more in it because I actually want an opening experience when I open that and then I get the box out and then I open the box and the tissue paper comes out and then the set of shoes come out. And it's like really thinking through those consumer experiences because you've just spent X amount on a new set of trainers. We want to make sure that that's actually clearly packaged. So if you're thinking about that, like how aggressive is the tonality of the brand? Are we very soft? Are we very passive? Are we mm. red flashing lights? Are we in a position on sale today, red spot special, down, down, prices are down. Like, you know, where do we actually sit in how the brand actually represents? 
Mm. No, we we went through this recently with a um a new brand over in um, Newcastle, Wilton Linky Stewart. Um, there are three three young guys, early thirties, all um leaving some franchise groups and all starting up their their own real estate company together. And you know, when when we sat down with them at the very start of creating their brand one thing that just kept coming up was that they just wanted to do the basic things really well. Mm -hmm. They just wanted, they wanted business to be simple. They wanted the way their customers interact with them just to feel really simple and Mm -hmm. easy. And so that we came up with them, you know, the tagline simple done well. Mm -hmm. And then we then execute that on, on their signboards with put simply, it's like living in a flawless Airbnb as the headline for a property or Mm -hmm. put simply, this is the best property in Newcastle. Mm -hmm. So all that then carries through onto their signboard. So the physical touch points that people see that then translates onto social media Mm -hmm. in their posts. And I think that that really just helps just get that message out there and just show who the brand is and who, who are that, who are they dealing with? So who are they, um, you know, how they can actually help you and how they're different from their competitors. And it's really about being friendly and approachable and easy and, Mm-hmm. Um, and smooth, you know, and we've done some similar things as well with another um, real estate brand over in um, Sydney as well, um, Saliba Estate Agents with Josh Saliba. And um, a, a big part of, you know, creating his brand was he was really competing with, say, like the a lot of bigger groups like McGrath and Di Jones and, and um, Ray White. And, you know, they, they've all got these incredible assets, these buyer databases, they've got this long track record, they've got this history. And so for him to compete against these agencies, it was a really hard space for a startup to do in his, his market. You know, he's a really hard worker. So that, that was really going in his favor. But when we sat down with him and, and did that, that brand research and discovery, we really identified that um, he believed that these bigger companies were all marketing their homes quite similarly. Mm. And so he wanted to go in with a different message, which, which was that you know, all homes are different. They shouldn't be marketed the same. So we've given them three mm. core, core brand colors. And so if you choose, say, their green brand colour, you then get the green signboard, you get the green brochures, you get the green social media posts, the green flyers. So it really starts to roll that a different look out. So they've got the green, the orange and the black, and mm-hmm. it really just changes the, the conversations that they have with their vendors. And so they can be saying, well, how do you want to showcase your home? And I think the interesting conversation is that, like, I tend to think about um, those mechanisms who so say, okay, great, we've got a brand mechanism. So what does the brand stand for? you know, are we a challenger brand? Mm. So if we're a challenger brand, like we're out there. So I, I for example, use AHM as my health insurer. Mm. They're a challenger brand. I was with the previous one, which was Bupa. They're like the big, you know, multinational. And I felt like that as a customer of theirs. Yeah. And then when I went over to AHM, they're like, hey, by the way, you didn't use many of your benefits this year, so we're just going to give you an extra grand, you know, to spend next nice. year. You know, and so the way that they actually communicate and what they say and all of those things is actually a really important mechanism. And then how that then flows into the usage of the email and the way they write their copy is, is, a, is, is a really important asset. For agents, we then think about like, you know, what, so we've got the brand. How do we do that in the agency level? You know, so making sure that like our fit outs, our look, our feel, you know, the music that plays inside the organization, the sense, all of those things that that literally creates an experience. And then we then move down into what we actually go to call um, agent marketing. You know, so, so uh, did you know I'm number one? Yeah, like, like, so, so, <laughs> you know, record sale price, like that style of conversation and that, that you know, agents, you know, think about that. And Avis had that great conversation, we try harder, they were number two, right, in the hire car company. Mm. And you start thinking differently and then we then go down into property marketing, right? So I look at it and I say now that digital, in my opinion, is a very hungry beast for assets, mm. like, like lots of video, lots of content. And the easiest way for an agent to separate and differentiate is actually about building great video content. And so I start thinking about the stylization of that, where we've got brands that are doing some phenomenal work in this space that you actually get a video and you break up into three different ways. So you've got a reel, which is like a preview, you know, like, like, like a trailer, like you do in a movie. You've then got the film, which is actually the normal property film, which would actually be shot as a reel and also shot in landscape format for your major real estate portals. And then you've then got a sole video, which is then produced with all the key campaign statistics. And what you're doing in that is that you're playing beautiful sounds. So as you in a kitchen, you hear the toast popping and the kids running through. When you go outside, you hear the birds tweeting. When you're in a position that maybe, for example, you're, um, you're in a bathroom, there's actually the sound of, of rain or water falling from that, from that tap. And so the interesting conversation is that they're using other um, sound effects combined with visual effects to create an emotion. Mm. And some agents are very like punchy and bold and there's, you know, there's music and it's fast frames and slow frame and fast frame and slow frames. Other agents jump in a pool with their suit on. And, and so it's about 
like I'm much more the first one rather than the suit in the pool scenario, but it's about actually understanding where your brand actually sits. So I believe that one of the easiest ways to get brand traction is to list lots of property. Mm. Because when people experience your signboards with a QR code on them, when they experience, for example, your videos in the digital environment, when you amplify that with digital strategies like t-shirt technology, where someone goes to buy a t-shirt online, it follows them everywhere. Why don't we have the same with property? So when they go to have a look at the property online, it follows them across all the social media channels. And the way that you explain and communicate what I just explained then, which was what, you know, Facebook, you know, pixels and conversation around, you know, Google display ad networks. I didn't talk about that. I spoke about t-shirt technology, but yet it is actually all of that. Mm. And so th- this is about making the inaccessible accessible to your consumer because you get the way that you talk and the way that you make people feel when they interact with you. Mm. It's really about making some of these complex things seem really simple. And, and just going back to the video, I, w- I would really even take that a step further than just doing the three videos. Um, I think there's just a really good opportunity for agents to really showcase their personality, to showcase themselves authentically um, by just talking about some of the features in certain homes. Like some of the homes that you see agents selling are, in, are phenomenal homes with like beautiful features, beautiful kitchens. There's nothing stopping an agent having a really short 15 second video just showing off some of the features in, in the different areas of the homes. And so like if, if you were to think of every home as an asset and every home as well, what are the what are the really special features inside of this home and actually create short, short videos mm-hmm. just about those features and schedule one a day. Mm-hmm. So then you could have like we've got this you have this video at the front of the home talking about how there's this home coming to market really soon. Mm-hmm. And then you could have the actual release, you could, you could release either the full video or you could release one of these, each, each of these different features mm. you know, over a set period of time and then finally get into the full home. And you know, you would have seen that recently with the new Tom Cruise movie. Mm. Now, I, I remember seeing months ago on social media, Tom Cruise r- rode his motorbike you know, over a cliff six times in one day and parachuted off, off the back of, off that. Um, and then, you know, that sort of built hype for, for the, the movie that was coming out. And then he had like a whole series of interviews in Australia. Then, and they had a whole bunch of fireworks for his birthday birthday and they had the, the film release and now there's ads about it everywhere mm. so like instead of just going like here's my home it's listed mm. there's like a whole range of things that can happen before to actually talk about you know this house is coming to market these are the great features that it's got mm. and then here's the actual here's the actual video come 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 have a look come check it out and i think that really gives agents a really good opportunity to showcase themselves and their personality and you know social media is really about a numbers game and if you've got content going out consistently just the same way you do you're going to be building an audience, you're going to be building a following, and then it's just a matter of putting some media spend behind it and just and then just retargeting all of the people that have visited the website or, you know, that live in a certain area. Um, there's just so many different ways to really leverage that. Founders is brought to you by Josh Vegan Digital. You know, when we were setting out to go and create Josh Vegan Digital, we just had this whole idea that we wanted training to be on demand. You know, and everything in our life is on demand. We just press play inside of the Netflix app. We press play on YouTube, play on Spotify. Why couldn't we just press play on training? And what we decided is we want to be like super relevant to real estate agents so that in under a couple of minutes each day, if you wanted to, you could upskill and you could grow in new ways. And so we decided that we were going to release this thing that we called the edit, which is basically the latest in property news stories that's happening every week right the way around the country. So you could be incredibly sharp in your conversations with sellers. And then we built out the short courses, which was all about rapidly building skills, you know, whether or not it's about learning how to get better fees or to put on an assistant. And then we actually wanted to give you access to blueprints so you didn't have to wait for it every year. You could just watch it whenever you wanted and actually go from zero to hero around everything that it takes from goal setting, self and energy management, what you're doing around prospecting, listing, negotiation, and actually just have a system for the way that you work together with, you know, getting really inspired by some of the best people in the industry with the black and white interviews. Josh Vegan Digital is available on iOS and also on Android. It's an incredible app and it gives you everything that you'll need to be a much better agent. It's time to switch on. Yeah, the interesting part for me is about actually understanding how you take traditional media and move that into the digital space. So that, you know, if a signboard has a QR code on it, it gives you a very easy capability for someone to see that digital video of that property. Mm. The secondary part is is that like before I do anything at a marketing level, the first question I ask is that what's the purpose of what I'm about to do? So, yeah, so I would say, okay, great. What's the purpose of Just Listed? So, Steve, you've designed thousands of these, right? And yeah. like DL Just Listed cards and no offense, but the majority of them probably look like a mini ad for the property. Is that actually the purpose of the document? So I have an alternate view where I say the purpose of the document is to get the neighbor to the open house. So how do I do that? 
And so what would actually happen if you trialed it and tested it? And this is what great marketing is about, like split testing, like A test and a B test, right? One side of the street, you drop your little DL. And on the other side of the street, we do a letter. It just says, hi there, number 10 in your street is going to be available for sale on Saturday. The open for inspection time is going to be at 10 a.m. And we'd love to have you come through the property. Here is the QR code to see what it looks like online. If you'd like me to let you know what it sells for, just simply text me on this number. Mm. And so it's like direct response. It's very specific. You don't, well, which one's number 10? Before you know it, you're pulling out your phone and you're scanning that QR code. Bang, I got you landing on the website. And that website is then actually capturing the details and capturing the information, hopefully an inquiry and maybe even someone buying a copy of a pest and building report before that first open for inspections even happened. Mm. Now, I don't know if it works, but like I'm going to say, we should try that and see if it works. And then if it works, then you got to amplify it. How many people do you think just take a marketing idea and just run with it, but never actually test it and actually go back and retest them to make sure that those marketing items are still working the way that way that they were intentionally designed day one? Mm. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't test things enough. I, I remember um, many years ago, I, I did some work um, with a, a company in Adelaide and we put a thousand, um, we put QR codes on a thousand different signboards over the space of many years. And this is going back, I reckon, 2010. Mm. And in that entire time, we had three people scan them. Mm-hmm. But since COVID, things have absolutely changed now where mm. people are scanning QR codes like there's no tomorrow. We did some work with a real estate agency up in Brisbane and they're now going ham and just selling newspaper ads. And the reason why they're selling newspaper ads is because they've got QR codes in the newspaper ads and then they're using their UTM tracking codes on the QR codes Mm. so they can go back to homeowners and they can say, look, this is exactly how many people scan the QR code Mm. and went to the website based on the newspaper ad. Mm. And now the newspaper ads have become incredibly cheap because Mm. no one else is spending Mm. advertising money in the newspaper. So now they're getting this incredible reach and Mm. they're getting these beautiful photos put into people's lounge rooms in these these areas where they um, spend... um, exorbitant amounts of money to buy these homes and to uh, um, end on advertising. And I think there's just a really good opportunity to leverage that and to really um, look back and, and track what it is that you're doing. And UTM codes have been around for a really long time. You can put them on just about anything and then you can track, you know, back on the website where this, where the, the sources come from. So Steve, I'm going to be controversial. Mm. Does print in any of its forms still have a place? Yes. I'm glad you said that because I'm exactly the same, right? So one of the things that we do at an event, um, we, we do a postcard and it's got a QR code on the back of it. And if we're uh, announcing something like a new podcast, like recently I Dream Big Move Fast with Phil Harris, we actually have these postcards and we just put them on all the seats. Mm-hmm. And everyone gets it. And there's a photo of Phil and I and on the back there's a QR code. They scan it and all of a sudden they're listening to it on Spotify. And that like is a great example of what we've got to call in-place merchandising, mm-hmm. you know, where people can actually grab it and they can get access. The secondary conversation is that if print has actually got its place, then how do you actually dominate in digital? Because digital seems hard because there's so many advertisers competing for the audience Mm. because that audience buys lots of things, not just real estate services. Yeah, I think a lot of um, real estate brands really need to spend more time actually building out their foundations and really understanding who they are as a real estate company. Mm. And I think a good example of that outside of real estate is Milk Run. Mm. So for people living in Sydney, you can buy um, groceries, get them delivered to your home in 30 minutes, mm. um, partnered with Woolworths. Mm. And, um, you know, if you look at their content on social media, it's really good content. Anyone that's listening to the podcast should just open up Instagram, have a look at, type in Milk Run and look at their content. You know, like they, they do recipes, for example, like the, the Big Mac Snitty mm-hmm. or they'll do French to- French toast that's made with that up and go juice that you get in those milk boxes or mm. um, Tim Tam tiramisu. Mm. So like really fun, creative recipes. But then the only reason why they can do that really good content is because, you know, they've really I- identified their brand persona, which is really about being that helpful, reliable friend that's but, but just They've got to be a challenge your brand there, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so and I was saying this to you recently, like I, I, I'm in Balmain in Sydney and I, I drive along and I see there's this big billboard out and it's like Coles and Uber now partnered. Mm. So anything at Coles delivered by Uber. I'm like, okay, great. I've got an affinity with Coles. I know Uber is a brand. I've got no problems with that. But Milk Run just feels so challenging. Like, you know, I'm, I'm on there and I'm doing it and it's just delivered and it's done. And then, and, and, and it, it was actually a challenger brand that was set up. There's a lot of money spent on that and then mm. it went broke. Yeah. And then it was bought by Woolworths. Mm. Now, I don't, I don't massively have an affinity with Woolworths, whatever, it's just a supermarket to me. But literally, Milk Run, I'm like, yeah, it's cool. I don't really care where it's coming from. If I'm going to order my Tim Tams, 
I just want to make sure the Tim Tams turn up. And what Milk Run did really, really well is that like literally when they came back to life, they had that video arcade game and it was this great mm. video like game over Then play again. Oh yeah, play again. And then they put in player one was, you know, them and player yeah. two was then Woolies. And then like literally, and then they, they've done a really good job of actually separating and differentiating. And I think that if you le- look at the basics, like some businesses talk about off market, mm. some businesses talk about coming soon. Some big businesses are like coming soon to Seddon, you know, and like the location of the suburb or prospect, you know. Yeah. And you go, well, what do you mean it's coming soon? It's already there. You know, and so but what you've got to start to realise is that like that's actually your brand experience, isn't it? About how you name things, your naming conventions mm. determines whether or not people find it accessible. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, and there's so many different ways you can use your words. Um, and, I, and I think just going back to, you know, Milk Run, like they're, they've really identified their tone of voice. It's really just about being, you know, casual and friendly and approachable, mm. um, you know, and conversational and playful. But then you compare that to Woolworths who own them, mm. you know, that it's owned by the same company, but they're two completely different brands. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think there's just so, so much space for people inside of real estate to identify you know, who their brand persona is. If that, if that brand was a person, how would that person talk? Mm-hmm. What are some of the themes that that person would talk about? Mm-hmm. What are some of the words that they would say? Mm-hmm. And how do we then go about using these words inside of these different assets to mm-hmm. actually showcase who we are and what we do and how we set set ourselves apart. And going back to what you were saying before about those just listed, you know, the, if you've got that really tight, you can then go and put those in people's letterboxes. Mm. Um, and it actually cuts through, like going back to Wilson Lanky Stewart, they can say, like their messaging says, you know, put simply, this home's coming to market. Mm. Or put simply, we've sold this, you know, mm. this property sold for X above expectations. And we've certainly seen that as a trend in real estate industry yeah. in the last couple of years. But the, the thing that gets me is about actually understanding that, you know, for the for you to own the future, you've got to be confident about the direction of where your brand is going. Correct. And, and, and you need to be understanding about, okay, great, how do we develop that? And, and one of the things that I've been amazed at is the complete lack of brand campaigns. Mm. Now, one of my favourite ones of all time was the Foxton's one in the UK that came out in 2018. And I was like, movers need shaking. If you need a moving, we'll do the shaking. Yeah, and like get Foxton's on it. And I like literally, and and it's just, they created this brand, which was exceptional. Is that not possible in Australia because agents want to have their own brands within a brand? Or is it actually possible for us to actually have great brand campaigns that agents get behind and unite behind because it's a really important brand messaging. And, 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 and have we ever, are we, are we just not in a position that we've got larger challenger brands? Because we, we definitely have individual agencies mm. that try to be a challenger brand, but, but ultimately, you know, learning where that fits. I think brand campaigns have such a big space inside of the residential real estate market in Australia. Um, you know, like if, if you just look at other brands in Australia, like Combank, for example, mm. if I was to say which bank, you'd probably know straight away that that's, that that's comes from Combank. Mm. And what's incredible about that is that hasn't run since the 90s, mm. but people still remember Combank mm. with that which bank messaging, and that's because that campaign ran for such a long period of time. Mm. And I think if you would reverse that back to real estate, you, know, you could quite easily have a message that, um, can be used for the overarching brand mm. and then how can that then be translated to the individual offices and then how can mm. agents then inside of those offices use that that particular uh, campaign messaging you, you're making me think back to the um, the old LG hooker nobody does it better mm. and when I was younger I was trying to convince my dad that we should rebrand our agency nobody because we do do it better you know and it's, 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 uh, like every single time that LJ Yoga did that ad campaign we were going to be there on the sideline right and and it's I think it's like it's like you know and that's that's the art of what great marketing is about right you got to understand about where you actually sit and I think that too many agents are about you know I'm number one or I'm this or I'm that and, yeah. and you're not actually thinking about what you actually do for, for consumers and it's like you know, people don't buy a Harley Davidson, they buy a Freedom Machine. You know, you don't buy a Chanel handbag, you buy the moment of significance, the moment of arrival that you're actually looking after yourself. You know, yeah. like, like, you know, when you when you go and you buy Coca-Cola, you're buying refreshment, like literally in a can. Yeah, people yeah. really need to know why they should care about you before they spend money with you, not like... The emotional outcomes. Yeah. So, so Nike, you're an athlete. Mm. You're like, I put my Nikes on this morning, man. I was like Usain Bolt when I went out running, you know, like, and, and, and that's what you got to start to think is that people are buying the attributes, mm. you know, and this is the interesting conversation is that when I buy your services, geez, real estate brands are pretty boring. Like yeah. they're pretty bland. Super corporate. And, 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 and well, either that or just completely unthought about. Mm. Like there's just no thinking into the customer experience of what is this customer going to go about? So you're going to walk in and you're going to go, okay, great. So is there an information sheet about the property? When I buy the property and I move in, when's been night? What's the best pizza restaurant in this area? Mm. Like, what are the things that you love? How come there's no, like, cheat sheet from us that's given to a consumer when they actually move into a property? 
because you think that the branding and the marketing experience like ended when the salt sticker went up. Mm. And and that's actually the, the the challenge that we've got is about, you know, the, there's a lot of value in lifetime value of a customer. There's a lot of value in past clients. There's a lot of value in building those things out and people just have not thought about those. Mm. Yeah, so I, I've been trying to get back into my running and uh, one of the things that I did recently was go and get fitted properly for a um, proper pair of running shoes. First time in my life that I've done that. One of the really interesting things um, in doing that is they put you on the treadmill, they have this camera behind you, they they, they film the way you run and then, then they have a conversation with you afterwards and show you what they've, they've filmed on this big screen mm. and they, they were showing me that my legs are leaning slightly inwards so this is the mm. type of shoe I should I should have. They then bring out three pairs of shoes that all match that and then run with each of those three pairs of shoes on and then I say, well, these ones felt the best and then it comes time to you know pay for them. I, I, I pay for them, don't even think about what the price is. It's the most amount of money I've ever spent in my life on a pair of running shoes. Mm. You know, I then get the box, the shoe box, I get home, I open it up inside of there. Oh, sorry, when I was getting when I was getting fitted, they were asking me what my goals were. I said I went mm. to the city to Bay, which is a 12 kilometer race. Mm. Um, then they, they had like a, a um, workout thing in there, like mm. how to actually get built up to that that level, printed out on a card, and that's a common race in Adelaide. So mm. they just slot, slot, put that right in there start using the shoes, really good fit, really good, really enjoying the run. Then I get a text message a few days later to say like, hey, Steve, just checking in to see how your pair of Brooks are going. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've got any concerns, any questions, just give us a call on this number, we'll help you out. About a week after that, I get a phone call from them just to check in that my Brooks are going okay with me. Like from a brand experience point of view, like I'm not going to buy from anyone else mm. running shoes ever again mm. because these guys were just incredible at doing that. And I think I heard you uh, in a training session a while ago talk about um, – you know, a lot of real estate agencies will give out champagne mm-hmm. when a uh, home is sold. And, and that looks incredible on Instagram, but you know, why aren't they cleaning their mm-hmm. homes? Mm-hmm. You know, and why aren't, uh, you know, if you're a new buyer, you, you've, you've, if you're paying for someone to actually go and clean the home, you then come into this clean home. Mm. You no, know, and then a month after that, you've got someone who's potentially doing the maintenance and maybe rehanging a door that might be, need to be moved and things like that. So, like, just really thinking about, like, who, who are you actually serving here? You're now serving mm. a person who's bought the home because like I, I've bought homes before and I can just tell you the experiences I've had have been terrible. I mean, mm. one, one case, you know, I got, I got a handful, literally a fistful of keys mm. you know, and I got this like really cheap bottle of wine and the, the string on top of the, of the bag broke and mm. I go to open the home and I'm like, which key is it? I've got no mm. idea. The place wasn't clean. It's like, okay, now I've got to clean it. Now I've got to do all this work. Mm. And so there's, to actually reverse that back and think about, you know, who are you serving here? Who's the buyer? How can you give them a great experience? Would just just really be a game changer. So, Steve, you've done uh, lots and lots of brand audits. You go in and you give people a bit of an idea of what's going well and, and where they can do some work. Mm. And that that's you, you must have got some incredible insights. What are a lot of the go wrongs that you often see when you first walk into to any business? Yeah, a lot of the, the, the go wrongs would be. Um, Brands don't really identify who they are to start mm. with. And so it then ends up being, well, this is how we communicate because this is how the owner communicates. Mm. This is how we look because this is the colors that the owner likes. This mm. is, these are our values because this is, you know, the owner's values. And it's like, well, hold on. Why don't we start with who are we serving? Mm. What do they care about? You know, do mm. they care about the environment? You know, do they care about, um, fashion, like what are those particular things and the things that they care about should then become things that the brand cares about. Mm. And then they, sh- they should then translate into you know, how the brand looks, how, you know, how the brand sounds, how the brand talks. Mm. And then that then becomes like the overall brand. And I think um, a lot of people, when we do these brand audits, you can, you can just see that they haven't, haven't really thought that through. Um, a lot of the brand common mistakes are that the brands are just really corporate, really quite, mm. um, there's no real sense of personality, no real sense of fun. Mm. Um, the ones that get it really right, really just stand out. And I think if you can get those foundations right, you can really get cut through. And then the money that you do spend on marketing goes so much further just because consumers connect with it. So Steve, you do lots of things for people from uh, brand creation. Uh, doing a rebrand for people, working through with all of the assets that they actually got to use, yep. the ongoing development of that brand as, mm. it, as it stays inside of a marketplace and the development of all of the tools, in not only the physical um, printed spaces, but also too in the digital spaces and helping people to actually really understand who they are. If someone wanted to get into contact with Steve Osborne, where would they go to? Uh, steveosborne.com.au. And in addition to that, um, you're also in as a part of the identity marketing business. So you could also go to the identity marketing website, which is identitymarketing.com.au Excellent Steve so great to have you in the studio on our Founders Podcast we look forward to seeing you next time Thanks Josh